I wanted to share with you my Tektronix 564 oscilloscope. Uh, it is a vacuum tube based oscilloscope. It also has a number of transistors. Uh, it's from about 1962, I believe. I uh, didn't see any actual date codes on it, but that's right around when these were produced. Uh, it was later replaced by the 564B, which was all transistors. Um, I wanted to cover a couple things in this video. First off, I just wanted to uh, show the scope to anybody that has never seen one. And secondly, I had some questions for any experts out there, especially people on the TechScopes mailing list, um, about a number of topics that I'll go through as I do this. This scope is a storage oscilloscope. It has a storage tube that can actually keep a waveform displayed after you switch off the input or change the input. And it has a, a, an upper half and a lower half that uh, let you store um, one mode can be, or one half rather can be in storage mode and the other half can be in non-storage or normal mode that works like any regular analog scope. Um, so I will get into that feature in a minute. Right now we're in what's called the faded positive state. This is uh, something they talk about in the manual uh, for calibrating and whatnot. The entire screen is in is in a glowing state right now. We've We've excited the whole screen and the flood guns that are used for the storage feature are now keeping those phosphors lit. Uh, we're in storage mode, you can see here, both top and bottom. I'm going to go to erase and back to storage mode. Now there's this faint glow that fills in gradually on these storage scopes. It uh, just has to do with how they work. Uh, it seems like you really want to wait until that glow kind of fills in before you actually lay down a trace. And let's Let's lay down the trace. We're in single sweep mode uh, at 0.1 microseconds. I'm feeding it a uh, 2 kilohertz sine wave. And uh, first we're going to use a feature to see where the trace is. Well, there's a couple ways you can do that. I mean, you can simply turn it on and look at the trace, doing it very dim so that ideally it won't store. Okay. Well, you could if... What's the problem here? Oh, we're in single sweep. Um, <laughs> if you go to normal, you have to be very careful with these uh, storage tubes. Too much brightness uh, can cause burn in. Okay, so there is our sine wave where it is. And if I turn it up and back down, we can actually write to it. That is actually burned in temporarily to the screen. If I go real dim, okay, now I can reposition the trace. You can see the trace move up and I could turn it up there and write it there as well. Okay, so that's uh, that's one way of using it. I don't necessarily think that's the ideal way to use it because you end up streaking stuff across the screen. You might turn the intensity up too high and burn in, etc. The ideal way, let's clear these off, erase. Normally, what you do is you go to single sweep mode, set the intensity relatively low, hold the locate button and adjust your intensity. And you can see that is the amplitude on the far left of the screen is the amplitude of the sine wave that we're going to write to the storage tube. So if I want to put it right in the middle, I can go there. If I want to increase the amplitude, I can adjust the vertical amplifier. And now I set the intensity. In this case, I'm going to use the 60 microamps that they have you work with in the, uh, uh, in the manual for calibrating. Make sure you never go to normal mode in 60 microamps. I'm going to re-clear this screen because there was a little bit left from last time. All right, let this flood in, and then I'm going to do a single sweep capture. There we go. All right, that sine wave is now burned in or uh, you know being stored. Uh, on both the upper and lower halves, obviously, because of the way I put it. So if I turn the intensity back down a little bit until I get my locate on the left side, there we go. I just don't want that too bright on the left side. Now I can keep the locate down, adjust this downward, say change my, oops, uh, change my oh, no, dirty uh, pot there. Change my attenuator, even change my uh, uh, time base too. 
Now turn this guy back up, do a single shot capture, and there, that's with uh, 50 microsecond time base, so it's half, uh, you know, it's uh, zoomed in more, so to speak, in time, and a uh, smaller amplitude as well. That's uh, 2 volts per division rather than uh, the one it was at. Um, so uh, that should do the locate feature. I had a question about the integrate button and fading the screen positive. Okay, so the manual says what you do is you move these guys, you move the uh, storage switches to erase, you hold down integrate, you release the storage switches, and then release integrate. And it's supposed to fade the screen positive. Erase, integrate, release, release. But look at that. It's like there's not enough to fade the screen positive. Not enough, uh, I don't know, probably charge on, on a capacitor. So let's erase those again. Okay, this time it's taking a nice long time to erase. Now this has to do with uh, uh, another question that I will have later. If anybody has any ideas of what circuit to look at for this, or if this is normal, please let me know. Okay, so to fade the screen, you can hold the integrate longer. If you hold it for, I don't know, five to 10 seconds, then you can fade the whole screen positive. Now you can also fade it by tracing a line over the screen, you know, wiping it, but then you run the risk of it being too bright, etc. Okay, so we're faded positive. So the question about that is, is that integrate working correctly? Is it okay that I have to hold it a long time or is there something wrong? Um, then let me talk about how I tweaked the coverage on this thing. Uh, and uh, coverage one and coverage two are settings for where the flood gun goes and how to get it out to the edges. Okay, that you may be able to see there's a very faint um, extra glow if I turn the uh, graphical light down. Extra glow, glow at a couple of the edges. I think that is what they're describing as reflections um, of the flood gun beam off the sides. They say to turn coverage one further clockwise to get rid of that. But the further clockwise you go with coverage one, the less coverage you have out here at the edges. Then you're supposed to use coverage, yeah, coverage two to uh, account for that. And you're supposed to turn coverage two further clockwise, I think it is, as well. Now my coverage two is already all the way clockwise. Uh, and I can see it begin to come in, but it's almost like maybe I need more coverage two. Or maybe this is perfectly normal. You guys who know, please let me know. Um, maybe there's something wrong in my coverage two circuit where a, a, a resistor has drifted or whatnot, and I can't get it um, as far as I need to. So I would appreciate any input on that. Uh, then, let's see, we also have this interesting effect, which you saw earlier. When I switch from store to non-store, I would expect the screen to, to go blank pretty quickly. Instead, it fades positive, and then very, very gradually, let's turn this intensity down by the way, this intensity does not affect the, the uh, uh, storage, but I don't want to accidentally put a wave on there. And now it gradually gets eaten away, kind of like acid. See this little radioactive material down here at the bottom. Same thing happens even if I'm in store, if I go to erase and then back, same thing. a little bit faster because there wasn't uh, you know because the storage the storage glow hasn't built up I don't know if that is actually affecting it uh, uh, if it's actually in the tube itself or uh, or what because I don't completely understand these things but um, you can see if we let it fill in here you know, I've also noticed that if you've been in non-store mode and you switch to store mode, it takes a long time for the screen to develop its background glow. If you've been using store mode, and especially if you've faded the screen positive recently in store mode without switching to non-store, then the glow comes up much faster and much more even. Is that normal? I don't know. Uh, please let me know. Uh, so, what I was going to show you here was... Well, here, let's uh, 
let's use the locate button here. We have to go uh, we're on a single sweep. We'll locate. Oh, you don't want that bright. Locate that. Okay, but we'll, we'll write. Well, let's write it actually to the upper tube here. Okay, so we're going to write that at that 60 microamp level, which is right around there. Write that guy. Okay, that's stored. Now, I'm going to turn. Well, we might as well write something to the lower one as well. Turn this down, locate there, locate, just position, turn up the right. Uh, sometimes does not trigger. Okay, there we go. Now, switch the bottom one. In fact, might as well go to erase and then non store. And again, we get this crazy acid effect. We also have some effect on the upper tube. Not a ton. It's not bad. I mean, the upper tube stays stored fairly well. This is kind of interesting, um, not necessarily to those who are familiar with the scopes, but to people who aren't, is now that lower tube is in non-store mode. It's just an ordinary scope there. And by the way, take a look at... Let me actually focus this. I have these traces out of focus because you can burn in these tubes so easily. But this is a razor sharp trace. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love looking at this scope because it's so much sharper than, say, my 2465 or my 2232 as well. Uh, now, I mean, part of that is the bandwidth. This is not very high bandwidth. Uh, time base itself only goes to, what, one microsecond. I think the vertical base, I'm looking at it now, I thought it said the amount. Uh, I don't see it. Maybe I can put that in the show notes. I think it's 4 megahertz or thereabouts. Um, so, this is kind of the beauty of the scope, is that I can compare this wave with that wave. Also, please let me know on the uh, tweaking of the coverage settings. And, uh, well, that's about it. I really like the scope. Um, I wanted to uh, say thank you very much to everybody at, on the Yahoo Tech Scopes uh, mailing list, uh, especially to David H., who has given me a lot of help on all my scopes. Thank you all, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and here's a little acid for your viewing pleasure.